So you've decided you want to visit Pearl Harbor, but you're not sure where to start and you don't want to miss out on anything. If so, this video is for you. For more Hawaii videos, make sure you're subscribed and click that notification bell so you're alerted every time we post a new video. Aloha, I'm Miriam and this is Yes to Hawaii. We make Hawaii videos take the guesswork out of planning your trip. As always, I'll leave timestamps in the description box below so feel free to skip around the video for the parts that you came here for. In this video, I'm gonna go over what's at Pearl Harbor, how to get there, and then lastly, I'm gonna compare a self-guided option versus an organized tour. If this is your first time visiting Pearl Harbor, I would recommend watching the video all the way through so you don't miss anything. Also, this way you can decide what works best for you and your family. Something that works well for a solo traveler might not work as well for a family with three small children. The same can be said for somebody wanting a shorter Pearl Harbor visit versus someone else who is a World War II history buff. First off, what is at Pearl Harbor? Pearl Harbor itself is a military base. And when people say they want to visit Pearl Harbor, they are typically referring to the USS Arizona Memorial, which looks just like this. To get to the USS Arizona Memorial, there's only one way, and that's through the Naval Ferry. You need a ticket which has a set time where you'll meet at the shoreline and be taken over to the USS Arizona Memorial. Now, how do you get a ticket? There's a few different ways. First is walk-up ticket. With this, it is exactly what it sounds. You walk up to the ticket counter and request a ticket. You'll be given a specific time where you can board the ferry. Like anything else, because it's a free walk-up ticket, you want to make sure to get to Pearl Harbor early. The important thing to know is just because you get to Pearl Harbor early, it doesn't mean that your ticket to get on the ferry is going to be right when you arrive. Your ticket can be timestamped for right when you get there. It can be timestamped for later in the afternoon. You don't know until you get there. And for that reason, I highly recommend spending the $1 to go on recreation.gov and get a specific timestamp ticket. Number two, and this is the one that I recommend, is to go on the government website, recreation.gov gov and reserve a timestamp. This will cost you $1, but it's completely worth it because you'll have a specific time and a guaranteed ticket. Now this is really important because of seasonality. If you were to visit Pearl Harbor now, it's going to be a lot easier to get a ticket versus if you were coming to Pearl Harbor in say June, July, or August, which is considered peak summer season. Regardless, I would still recommend spending the $1 to get a reserve ticket on recreation.gov. And third, you can also get a USS Arizona ticket by going through an organized tour. Now, as for audio tour, the audio tours are 100% worth the money and I highly recommend them. When you're at Pearl Harbor Visitor Center, you have a couple options. You can do a standard tour, which runs $7.50. You can also do the deluxe tour, which is a little bit more. I would do the deluxe tour because you also get access to the virtual reality center, which is pretty cool. Cool. Now, when you're on the recreation.gov website, you have the option to choose. You can choose to get just the USS Arizona ticket. You can do the narrated tour with ticket or the deluxe narrated tour with ticket. Those three options will allow you to select the specific time that you want to go on the USS Arizona Memorial. This is something I wanted to make sure that I brought up because I have seen in the past people who opt to purchase the narrated tour through a third party reseller, they realize that that doesn't necessarily include the USS Arizona ferry ticket. It is a little bit confusing because typically it's sold as the USS Arizona narrated tour and it is the narrated tour, but it's the narrated tour headset. If you want to make sure that you get the USS Arizona ferry ticket, make sure that your narrated tour says it specifically on there and you were given a time slot ticket. If you're going through recreation.gov, you most likely won't have this problem. Now, as for headsets, each of the different attractions will come with headsets. Some people breeze right by them, but instead I recommend that you grab those headsets. And the reason why is as you go throughout the different museums, each different museum has a set number of placards where you'll see a certain amount of numbers. Like most museums, you'll walk up to that placard, you'll type in the number in your headset, say number one, two, three, and then there's an audio sound bite that you can hear narrated about that specific attraction. Now the USS Bofin submarine takes it a step further where their headsets are triggered by sensors. So as you walk throughout the submarine, the headset goes off automatically and tells you when to go to the next section of the submarine. So beyond the USS Arizona Memorial and those two museums that are part of the Pearl Harbor Visitor Center, there's also three other attractions that are paid ticketed attractions that you can visit. Second, there's a USS Missouri Battleship. The battleship is huge. Tickets for adults run about $35 and tickets for kids run about $17. If you're visiting the USS Missouri battleship, I would definitely recommend giving yourself at least one to two hours there. That way you can see everything that's on the battleship. There's also docent led tours that run about every half an hour and those are included with the ticket price. So definitely make sure to check those out. Third, we have the Aviation Museum. It's two separate hangars of World War II planes and warbirds. This is actually pretty cool. Tickets for adults run about $25 and tickets for kids 
run about $14. You can also add on a docent led tour for about $10. There's also a really cool flight simulator that runs $10 for one seat in the two seater simulator or $20 per person if you want an exclusive solo flight. There's only about 150 tickets per day for the simulator, so reserve early. And fourth, there's a USS Bofin submarine and submarine museum. Tickets for adults run about $22 and tickets for kids run about $13. So as you can see, you can see as much or as little of Pearl Harbor as you'd like. There's again, four main attractions, the USS Arizona, the USS Missouri Battleship, the Aviation Museum, and lastly, the USS Bofin Submarine. Next, how do you get there? There's a few different ways to get to Pearl Harbor. First off, you can drive. There is parking at the Visitor Center. Once you get to the Visitor Center, you won't be able to drive to other parts of the base. You'll park at the Visitor Center, and then from there, you can take the Navy shuttle to take you to either the USS Missouri Battleship and the Aviation Museum. Next, you could also opt to take the city bus. There is a public city bus stop right out front of the Visitor Center. Third, you could also take a shuttle bus. There's quite a few companies on island that offer one-way or round-trip shuttle buses to Pearl Harbor. And lastly, you can go with an organized tour. Organized tour providers will typically include pickup as well. But how do you get to each of the different attractions? So with Pearl Harbor, because it's huge, not all the attractions are side by side. The USS Arizona Memorial and the Visitor Center are together. And right beside that is the USS Bofin submarine. So those two are in the same area. And from the visitor center, you can ride the Naval shuttle that will take you to other parts of the base. The Naval shuttle will take you to the USS Missouri battleship or the aviation museum. This is the way you'd have to do it if you decided to go to Pearl Harbor on your own, whether you chose to drive, take the city bus or a shuttle. If you decide to go with an organized tour, they have permits and they handle everything. So your same tour driver will take you to each of the different parts of Pearl Harbor. So again, if you decide to drive to Pearl Harbor on your own, you will park at the visitor center and from there you'll take the naval shuttle to take you to other parts of the base. The naval shuttle is free. Again, a lot of this depends on seasonality. So if you're coming to Pearl Harbor, say now, there's most likely going to be a lot less of a line versus if you were to come to Pearl Harbor in peak summer season, June, July, August. Now within the different attractions, there are places to eat. So when you get to the visitor center, there's snack shops there. There's also by the USS Bofin submarine, another small snack shop. At the USS Missouri battleship, there's a small eatery that serves hot food as well as snack. And lastly, the aviation museum has a full sit down air conditioned restaurant. And lastly, let's compare going on your own versus going on organized tour. Now, a lot of this depends on how you like to travel. For some people, they'd like to see the attractions on their own, read the placards, and go at their own pace. If that's the case, going on your own may be the right choice for you. For other people, they prefer organized tours. With organized tours, they include pickup, tickets, everything streamlined, plus you have the major benefit of having a guide narrating everything throughout the entire tour. If you're interested in history, I would definitely recommend going on an organized tour because you will learn a lot. And lastly, I've said it before and I'll say it again. A lot of this depends on seasonality. Again, visiting Pearl Harbor now, for example, can be very different from visiting Pearl Harbor in peak summer season, June, July, August, for example. And of course, information can change. So I will leave resources and links in the description box below. This video was actually inspired by two separate hotel guests that I met when I used to work as a concierge for almost eight years. In that time, I've probably planned upwards of thousands of itineraries for hotel guests. The first was an older gentleman who had purchased a Pearl Harbor tour that included a visit to the USS Arizona Memorial and the USS Missouri Battleship. He didn't realize until he actually got to Pearl Harbor that there actually was an aviation museum. He was crushed. By the time he got back from the tour, he realized he flew out the next morning so there was no time to go back to the aviation museum. Had he known there was an aviation museum, he would have chosen a different tour or most likely planned differently. The second guest that I met was a couple. They had opted to purchase a full day Pearl Harbor tour from home not realizing that they could actually just visit the visitor center on its own. They wanted a much shorter tour, but not realizing that they actually didn't have to do a full day comprehensive tour just to get to the visitor center. They would have saved a lot of time and money had they known this. I hope this video helps you. This is probably one of my most comprehensive videos, but it's an accumulation of things that I've learned from both living here on the island and working as a concierge, booking tours for guests and planning itineraries for people who wanted to go to Pearl Harbor completely 100% on their own versus those wanting to go on an organized tour. I hope this helps you plan your Pearl Harbor visit a little bit better. And if you have any questions, definitely leave them in the comments down below. I hope you guys liked this video and found it helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And if there's any other Hawaii videos you'd like to see, definitely leave them in the comments down below.